The Dracula of history is an enigmatic and controversial character. A national hero for his courageous stand against foreign invaders, his brutal treatment of his enemies also earned him the notorious nickname of Vlad the Impaler. To investigate the links between the Draculas of fact and fiction, I've brought my team of legend detectives to Romania. I'm amazed because back home I asked people, you know, Dracula, what do you know about him? And very few actually knew that there was a historic figure, Dracula, Vlad Tepes as he was known, Vlad the Impaler, long before he was in Bram Stoker's imagination as a vampire. You know, he was a real man. And so I'm really looking forward to finding out more about this guy who was, who was a Romanian prince. But I've got to warn you, I think it might be quite a gory story. It must be very interesting for a psychologist, Massimo. It is, it is very interesting. There's plenty to delve into. I'm particularly keen in, in finding out more about the vampire aspect of the whole story. Uh, hmm. If there is, if there are any relations to the real historical figure, Vlad Tsepesh, but also on local beliefs, hmm. if there are any traditions really linked to vampires or what do they call them. This is what I would like to know more about. We start our journey at Castle Bran, a three-hour drive north from Romania's capital Bucharest. Built in the 14th century, this stunning Gothic fortress sits on a 200-foot spire of rock. Energetically promoted by the Romanian tourist board as the real Castle Dracula, it's the country's number one tourist site. And every year, a quarter of a million tourists flock here. In the marketplace below the castle, the Dracula industry is in full swing. But it's not just the face of the vampire count on the t-shirts. Vlad Tsepes, the medieval warlord, is also a good seller. For some tourists, the links between the two are just impossible to grasp. Kind of confusing, I think. There's uh, kind of historical, uh, one of them, there was a guy called Dracula, uh, but whether it was Vlad Tepes, I'm not sure. I think it might be his father or something. Even the stall holders appear confused. Is this uh, a Dracula or Vlad? It's Dracula. Not Vlad. Vlad Tepes. Vlad Tepes, is this? Vlad Tepes. Whatever the souvenir items may claim, Castle Brown never housed a fictional vampire. By claiming Vlad as a hero, Romania's former communist regime seems to have ignored his barbaric reputation. But as Massimo is finding out at Bucharest's military museum, warfare in medieval Europe was not for the faint-hearted. This is the sort of armor that a nobleman like Vlad himself would have used. Chainmail, a sword. So even for him, war was a very up-close situation. Psychologically speaking, these were very brutal times. And perhaps there was nothing as brutal as the way Vlad himself dealt with his enemies. Impalement. There were many ways of doing this. Straight through the stomach was the simpler one. But maybe the most cruel one was to take and a blunt steak, grease it, and then insert it into the rectum of the victim, hoist it up, and let gravity do the job of killing them. It could have taken days as the steak worked its way through the victim. As psychologically, this must have been a terrifying weapon. Imagine Vlad's enemies coming into his territory and being met by a forest of impaled people. It must have been an overwhelming experience of horror for Vlad's own people as well. In the 21st century, Vlad's brutality appears grotesque, but Tessa believes his cruel tactics were appropriate for the time, a time when invasion by the Turks was a constant fear. Uh, we do know that Bram Stoker mentioned in his novel Voivod Dracula, Prince Dracula, who'd made his name against the Turk, and I think it's really easy to forget nowadays that at that time in Europe, you know, Christendom felt very, very threatened by the Turks. They'd taken Serbia, taken Bulgaria, they'd captured Constantinople. And then you've got this little prince, Dracula, in his tiny wee Valachia, 
taking the fight to the enemy. Extraordinary, really. And I think probably Bram Stoker, if he knew about this, was suitably impressed. Yeah. This little prince of yours could have been a little bit nicer to his enemies, couldn't he? Oh, yeah. Let me break it to you gently. I'm afraid to be a hero in those times, you sometimes had to be a tyrant. Yes, but he drank the blood of his enemies, didn't he? No. Yeah, still, the fact is, did Bram Stoker knew about this? Was he inspired by this Vlad Tepes? I think he probably was more inspired by Jack the Ripper's murders, which took place a few years before them, mm. than by Vlad.